<laughs> so today we're going to be looking at two new tools we're going to put on our tool belt. Um, we're going to be talking about distance and midpoint on a coordinate plane. So let's just jump right in. Go ahead and box or highlight in our distance formula. This is a new tool for us, at least for this class. Hopefully it's not an entirely new tool for you, but maybe it's a refresher. So, all right, so let's talk about, okay, hello, hi, conversation stopped. Thank you. All right. So um, we're going to talk about our distance formula. What this, is, what this is used is to help us find the distance between any two points on a coordinate plane. So you can see that our focus today is working on an x, y coordinate plane, right? Now, um, we're going to write something else down here. So when we write our distance formula, I want you to make sure to leave a little space below it as we write this down. But let's jot down what the distance formula is. It looks like this, right? It's the distance between... Any two points is found by taking the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 also squared. Now this x2 minus x1, this y2 minus y1, that comes from these right here. And if you didn't quite catch this prior in Algebra 1, the little sub ones and twos, that's meant to indicate to you this is ordered pair number one, this is ordered pair number two. In fact, let's write that down. Like this right here is the x, y coordinates from ordered pair number one, and this is the x, y coordinates from ordered pair number two. So they don't have any actual mathematical value. They're just a label. It's like putting a name on something, and it's how we differentiate between those two. Girls. It's time to focus. It's the second time I've had to stop a lesson to ask you guys to focus. I don't want to do it a third time. There will be points deducted. Okay. All right. So as we're talking about this idea of ordered pair uh, number one and ordered pair number two, the idea here is that you make sure that you keep these as partner groups as we're working through this problem. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this first question here, right? Now, we had talked about segment length, right? Which is really, we talked about that as the distance between any two points. And that example that I had given you previously was we had a nice, easy, straight line like that, right? And we went one, two, three, four, and we counted across that. And that works really well if we have a horizontal line, if we have a vertical line. The problem is, is when we have a slope line because we can't count like one, I don't know, where's, where's two-ish, three? We, can, we can't count down on this angled or sloped line like that, right? And I see this all the time. I see students want to go, okay, well, that's one, two, three. You know, how does that how does that work, right? Especially with that particular line. And if you didn't know this, let's just talk about real quick why that is. You don't need to write this down. Let's just let's just kind of talk about this right here real quick. So, what is that distance right there? Okay, what is this distance right here? One. Okay, what is this distance right here? No, no, I don't know. Is that one? Yeah, Pedro. Why can't you just do the Pythagorean theorem to find a distance? Okay, hey, Pedro, we're working on a lesson here, okay? Let's stay focused on where we're at, okay? All right, there you go. Okay, so what is the distance right here? Yeah, it's a square root of two. Where does that come from, though, right? Like, this is a Pythagorean theorem question, like Pedro was saying, right? So what we have here is you got one squared plus one squared equals c squared, right? So 1 plus 1 equals c squared, 2 equals c squared, so then the square root of 2 is equal to c, right? So as you're counting across these coordinate grids, right, that's an easy one count right there. But when you're going on in a diagonal, that's not a one count, so we can't count down lines like that. And it's even more complicated when our line doesn't fit with that nice, easy one-by-one one slope, right? And so that's where our distance formula comes into play is to help us figure that out, right? Okay, so let's set up a distance formula question for this one. And what I want you to do to start off is I want you to write down, we're going to call this uh, ordered pair number one, and we're going to call this one ordered pair number two. 
And I want you to write down the x, y address for those two points. Go ahead and do that. Should have had negative 5, positive 3, and negative 2, negative 3, right? So we're going to use those two points with our distance formula to set this up. And so we're going to go like this. Distance is equal to, and this is how I'd recommend you start all your distance formula questions with sort of a blank template like that. And we're going to name our tool, right? So this is our distance formula. That's the tool we're using here. Okay, and so you start here with this. Now, this is something that I see mixed up all the time, okay? You have to remember that it's a plus problem in the middle here. Then within each of your parentheses, it's a subtraction problem. And then don't forget to square your groups, okay? So important that you remember that. All right, why don't you go ahead and fill in the numbers that go here in those spots. Let's see if you can get them in the right place. Go ahead. You should have put like that right and of course that's because we decided we define that first point as ordered pair number one and ordered pair number two now you can flip flop those it is possible as you're having the freedom to set up those problems right so then we can start to simplify this up a little bit once we have these in the right place we'll say our distance is equal to okay so once we have minus a negative what happens when we subtract a negative right so this becomes one big positive right okay so then we have negative two plus five so what's that value Positive 3, right? Squared. Okay, and then negative 3 minus 3. What's a negative 3 minus 3? Is what? It's negative 6 squared. Okay. I want you to swoop a little arrow up here real quick because I do want to talk about something that's important that you understand. Okay? I want to make sure you understand the difference between this. Oops, that's way too big of a 2 between this and this, because these two are not the same. This one right here is negative six squared, while this one right here is negative six squared. Did you hear the difference? Let me say it again. Negative six squared versus negative six squared. Okay, so in the way that you say that, and the way that those parentheses are grouped is going to result in a different thing. If I say negative 6 squared, that's negative 6 times negative 6, which is what? It's positive 36, right? But if I say negative, or the opposite of, 6 squared, well, what's 6 squared? What's 6 squared? 36. And then we want the opposite of that. That results in a negative 36. So it's really important that you write correctly and keep your parentheses organized because those two produce two totally different answers. Okay. All right. Then finishing this up. So now we have D is equal to nine plus 36. D is equal to the square root of what? 45, right? Now that's not a perfect square. Right? So that's not going to give us a nice, neat whole number. In fact, like square root of 49 is 7, right? Square root of 36 is 6. So somewhere between 6 and 7, probably closer to 7 because 45 is closer to 49. Do square root of 45 on your calculator. Tell me what you got. Okay, so about 6.7-ish, right? Okay? And so this is our distance of this or the length of this line segment. Okay? Everybody good with that? Okay. All right, now let's do this. Let's draw a line from here, oops, wrong, from here down to here, like that. What's that? Yeah, 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 that's fine. Okay, you got your line drawn? And then let's come across here like this. All right, how long is that line segment right there. Okay, that's six units long, right? And how long is this bottom line segment right here? Okay, that's three units long, right? So then we could do something 
like that, right? And that's what we're doing here. So, so now we're talking about the area of these squares, right? So what's the area of the square coming off of this side? 36 units long, right? Or 36 units squared. And the area of the bottom one? And what does that add up to for the area of the big one? Right? And those of you that wanted to reassess this standard, this is that 0 0.3.2 standard, right? One of the questions, the two things that I was looking for was, number one, how do the areas of the squares relate to each other? In other words, the sum of the areas of the small and the medium square add up to the same area as the larger square. That was one thing I was looking for in your explanation. And then the other one was, how do the areas of the squares relate to the triangle? And that is that the square root of the areas is the length of one side, or in that case, one side of the triangle, right? And so those were the two things that I was looking for in that answer, right? Okay, so this is actually the distance formula, as Pedro pointed out, is a manipulation of our Pythagorean theorem, right? It just looks like this. C is equal to the square root of. By the way, notice I didn't say C squared here. Why didn't I say C squared? Because you're going you're gonna to square the answer. Yeah, I'm going to already take the square root over on this side, right? And then these two differences right here, right? This is the distance of the short side. This is the distance of the medium side. And so what we have is, is a squared plus b squared in here. So that's why our groups are squared. That's not what I want to have happen. This is why our groups are squared in here. I do not know what's going on with my computer. Okay. All right, so Pedro, your question, why can't we just do Pythagorean theorem to do this? Well, you can to a certain extent because they're the same thing essentially, right? However, one of the things that I'm testing you on is can you use the distance formula? And so on a question where I say I need to see if you can use the distance formula or explain the connection between the distance formula and Pythagorean theorem, that's why we have to know both of these tools because that's how the standards will be assessed. Okay, make sense? So it's not just enough to know one tool, you need to know both tools and then the connection between them. Okay? All right, everybody good? Questions? All right, good. Then let's roll it. So then why don't you go ahead and do, let's see, we'll do, um, we'll do number two, that's fine. So set up a distance formula question for number two. Make sure you name your tool. And then I'll kind of give you a sort of a checkpoint along the way, and then we'll see how you do. Come up with the distance between points A and B, A being at negative 4, 1, and B being at 3, negative 1. All right, go ahead. So again, I'd recommend you start your problems off with a blank slate like that right there, and then put your numbers in. That way you can keep track of your double negatives if you have them. Up with square root of 53, about 7.3. Good job. Let's see if you got that right. Good. Easy peasy. Good stuff. All right, cool. Okay, then I don't think we need to do number three. I think you guys have a good handle on this. Again, make sure for the assessment, you can not only run a distance formula problem like this, but that you can explain the connection between the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem. Cool. All right. Let's talk about another new tool for us then all right so this is our midpoint formula so segment addition postulate definition of a midpoint distance formula and now we have midpoint formula and there's a difference between midpoint formula and definition of a midpoint and we'll talk about that as we go along all right let's start here first by just we're going to do a little sketch over here so in this space right here i want you to do just a line a little short line like that and then a little bit longer line across like that and then i'm going to go one two three four five one two three four five and one two one two like that 
top. I'm going to put a point right here. And I'm going to put a point right here. And then I'm going to connect those to like that. All right. Okay. I want you to put a point where you think the dead middle or the midpoint of that line segment that I have drawn up there is. And why would you choose to put your point where you did? All right. Talk it over with a neighbor. I'm going to ask you to give me a reason why you chose what you chose. All right, coming back to you in three, two, one. All right, let's go with Simone. All right, what'd you get for your middle point? Where'd you put your point for the middle and why did you choose that? Okay, so so like a coordinate grid, like one, two, like right here. Okay, all right. Actually, we could probably put a label on that, right? Okay, why'd you choose that point? Okay, so you counted the length of the segment, which we can do because it's horizontal, right? And you got? Oh, I see. Okay, so you you what? You took one step this way and then one step that way, and you just kept going. Okay, and so you, so how many steps did you end up taking? from each direction. Four, right? Because it's an end, so it's an eight, you know, eight unit line segment, right? And so four steps in each direction got us to the middle. Okay, that's good. Why don't you write in the addresses then for those two points right there? Okay, so this one is going to be negative 3, 2, right? And this one is going to be positive 5, 2. Yeah? Everybody good? Okay, so let's talk about what the midpoint formula is. So the midpoint formula looks like this. Did that all just delete? Wow. All right, hold on just one second. It's a fairly easy problem for us to do. Let's say that our midpoint is going to be equal to our x1 plus our x2. So we're going to take the two x coordinates of our two endpoints here. So we're going to go with negative 3 plus 5. We're going to average those. And then we're going to take our two endpoints y coordinates. And we're going to average those. Okay, so negative 3 plus 5 is going to give us our 2 over 2. And then 2 plus 2 over 2 is going to give us 4 over 2. And when we simplify that, we come up with the midpoint of that line segment. Now, that's easy to do because that one's a horizontal line. But again, when we have a slope line, that's where it becomes a little bit trickier to find that midpoint. But you can see that this formula does that for us by just plugging in the endpoints, okay? So let's try one. Let's do number four. You're being asked to find the midpoint of segment GH given these two endpoints right here. So you're gonna set up a midpoint formula. You're gonna name your tool. And then you're going to find the midpoint in between those two points right there. All right, go ahead. No, I want you to write out midpoint formula. Should have found 8, negative 3. Yeah, good. Pretty good. Let me see. We good? Let me see around the room. Everything solid? Okay. Getting there. So I did the wrong one. That's okay. Just did one practice question in there. All right. So that's not too bad, right? So we have this tool now as well. All right. So let's go to the back side. 
This is where it gets a little tricky. Okay. So you can see here, look at this question, number six right here. It says, find the coordinates of A if point M at negative 1, positive 2 is the midpoint of segment AB and B has coordinates of 3 and 5. So now we have a midpoint and one endpoint. Now our job is to find the other endpoint of the line segment. So let's do this. Let's do the same drawing that we did a second ago just for sake of experimenting a little bit. So let's do this same little drawing over here. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two. We're gonna put a point there. We're gonna put a point here. We know that this point is negative three, two, right? And this is one, two. And then we knew our line segment kind of went out here-ish, right? Now, this is the same problem we did on the front side of our paper. So we, we, we know what the actual other endpoint is. What's the other endpoint? Five comma two. Five comma two, right? Okay, that's the other endpoint, right? But let's see how we can manipulate our midpoint formula to help us find a missing endpoint, all right? So in order to find a missing endpoint, I want you to swoop an arrow up here because you're going to use your midpoint formula. Okay. And here's how you're going to do it. So the midpoint of this line segment is 1, 2. 1, 2, that's the midpoint. And we know that that came from this right here. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's where the midpoint came from, right? Okay. Now, we know that this x and its partner y and this x and its partner y are the two xy coordinates of the two endpoints. So we know one of the endpoints is negative 3, 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this right here with negative 3. And I'm going to replace this right here with positive two. So I'm plugging in one of the endpoints that I know. And then the other, x2 and y2, that's gonna be the other endpoint that I don't know. So now we've, we've effectively created two math problems for us to do here, all right? So give yourself a little squiggle down your paper like that. And here's what we know. We know that this one came from this math problem right here. So we can rewrite that one over here. See where I got that? And this too came from this math problem right here. See what I did? Right, because that's the midpoint formula that produced those two x and y coordinates. So we're just going backwards. We turned around and walked the other direction on the same sidewalk. Okay. Solve those equations, one for x2 and one for y2. Go ahead. Up with 5, 2, which confirms for us again that this manipulation of the midpoint formula works as well. So now we can use the midpoint formula not only to find a midpoint, but to find one of the endpoints. All right, and so you'll have to know how that question's being phrased and which variation of that tool to use. Okay, I have a screwdriver I used this weekend that has a Phillips head on one and all I have to do is pull it out and turn it upside down and it has a flat head on the other side. Same tool, just two different versions of that tool, same thing here, midpoint tool, two different versions of it to help us answer different questions. All right? Okay, let's try one. Let's do number six. Okay, so now that we've kind of got this 
manipulation of this tool, now you can take that and do number six. Oh, thank you very much. All right, give it a try. Number six. Should have come up with negative five, positive nine as your other end boy. Okay. So you want to get your problem set up and name your tool accordingly, right? And then you want to show your work for finding your two coordinates of your endpoints. Okay. Let me see how comfortable you are with that problem. Five, nailed it. One, still kind of not so sure. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay. You want to do one more? Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. No, we're good. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. Um, we're gonna we're gonna move on to one other thing, and then for those of you who want to do another one, we can work on another one when we get to the practice time, because you guys will have some time to work on practice here in class. Okay. So let's go down here to number ten. Okay, so number 10 says if G is the midpoint of segment FH, and then you have these two expressions given to you, find FH. All right, go ahead. Let's see what you do. Do you start your problem like that? Okay, so this is a different kind of midpoint question, right? This is the one that we were looking at. I'm going to move this over here. This is the one we were looking at the other day, which is our definition of midpoint, right? And so I want to emphasize the difference because this is a different tool, okay? So you have to be able to recognize which type of a midpoint question are you being asked so that you pull out the right tool and you use that tool accordingly, okay? All right, go ahead and finish this one up. The screen you should have come up with that right there. Good. Okay. So we have four tools now, right? And when you see them on the assessment, it's going to be a mixed bag. So you're going to need to be able to identify what's being asked of you. What tool do you use? Is it segment addition postulate? Is it definition of a midpoint? Is it distance formula? Is it midpoint formula? That's what you'll need to know when you're identifying your tools for your questions. All right. Good? Yes. Um, not to initially set up the problem, no, because you wouldn't be, because you don't have a, a total amount. I mean, you know, eventually you're doing segment addition postulate right here, but we're looking at what problem did you use to set up to find your x equals that's what we're looking for oh, don't. yeah yeah I let, yeah i'm not going to have you name substitution here even though that's what we're doing okay. yeah. yeah i'm looking for your initial setup what do you use to find your x value okay all right good cool